rock monster eagle and monster slayer. After killing Yeitsu, the twins were eager to continue their mission to rid the world of the monsters that were decimating the people. The next day, they left to kill the horned monster who lived in the Yemez Mountains. As a byproduct of this second success, Chipmunk acquired his stripes when he was striped by the blood of the dead monster. Their third challenge was to kill the rock monster who would swoop down and carry the people off to feed the nestlings on top of Ship Rock, or Sepitai. As the sun was coming up, Monster Slayer ran along the top of the Continental Divide with the colon of horned monster filled with blood around his neck and the small intestines folded over his shoulders. He was seen by the rock monster eagle who began flying toward him. He sang out saying he was Monster Slayer and was coming to kill the monster. As the rock monster flew over and passed him, Wind's child whispered in his ear to allow the monster to pick him up. Monster Slayer was carried to the top of Ship Rock and thrown against the sharp rock which was black with the blood of the people. Monster Slayer used his flint club to deflect his path and to avoid harm. He used some of the blood which he had filled the intestines that he carried around his neck to create the appearance of great bleeding. The two children of the monster rushed out from their cave to get their food. Their father flew off to find another victim. Monster Slayer arose and asked the two children of Rock Monster Eagle what time their father usually returned. They replied that he returned at exactly noon and that male rain began over at mountain which lies elevated, the Lakachukai Mountains, to the west, at about that time. He then asked when would their mother return. He said that she would return when the sun began to drop a little and female rain began at Beautiful Mountain. Monster Slayer then built a lookout on the east side of Sebitai from the rock there. Exactly at noon, a dark cloud appeared at mountain which lies elevated, from which zigzag lightning could be seen. Soon the rock monster eagle appeared with the young Dine man and threw him to the rock where he lay motionless. When rock monster eagle landed on ship rock, monster slayer shot it with a zigzag lightning arrow. The monster fell off and there was a tremendous earthquake. The children of the monster began running about crying. Monster Slayer told them to be quiet and to go sit down, which they did. When the sun had dropped slightly, a dark mist appeared at Beautiful Mountain with many rainbows. Shortly, the female rock monster eagle returned with the young Diné female and threw her to the rock where she lay motionless. Monster Slayer then killed this monster as she was still settling onto Ship Rock. Another earthquake ensued. Monster Slayer then called the two children of the monster out and told them he was going to kill them now. They pleaded with him four times. He told them that if they ever thought in wicked ways again, he would certainly kill them. He would then remove the tongue of the older child and replace it, reversed, saying, From this day on, be sure to remember the things you two have promised about yourselves. In days to come, when Earth's surface people come into being, they will make use of you. He motioned them to the east to the south, to the west, and to the north, and then released him to the east. The bird flew in the sunwise circle four times and called out Sag, Sag, and then left. This bird became the golden eagle. Earth's surface people still, to this day, find his down, tail, and wing feathers useful. Monster Slayer then took the younger one and also pulled out his tongue and reversed it. He spoke to it, saying, As for you, you shall provide prophecy for the Earth's surface people. Sometimes you shall speak the truth, and sometimes you shall lie. It will be for men to decide what is true and what is false. That way they shall learn from you how to tell the difference between wisdom and folly. Then he motioned with him in the same way and then released him in the direction of the La Plata Mountains to live in Big Rock Cave. This bird became the owl. He called out, Uwu, uwu, as he flew away. Monster Slayer then walked around the top of Sebitai Ship Rock and saw no way to get down. He walked around four times in a circle and found no hope. He began to worry, but Wind's child spoke into his ear as usual, saying, Don't be thinking like that. You should realize that the word has been sent out to places. Again, Monster Slayer walked over to the edge and looked down. Before he was certain that no one was there, but this time he saw a head sticking out from behind a rock. This was Batwoman. He said, My grandmother, carry me down. Four times he asked. She then began to come up the rock toward Monster Slayer. She said, 
You must not look at me, my grandchild. I am starting up there. You must not look at a person. That must absolutely not be done. She began to approach along the rock singing, I am the only one that clings, clings, clings. She had carried her head bag up, suspended by strands of strong spider web. She told Monster Slayer to climb into her head bag and to close his eyes and not open them before they reached the ground. Several times Monster Slayer opened his eyes and each time he began falling rapidly. Batwoman scolded him severely each time. When he reclosed his eyes, their slow descent resumed. In this way, they reached the valley floor. They were right beside a large ridge-like wing bone from one of the monsters. Monster Slayer used his flint club to extract the hearts of the two monsters. Then he cut out wing feathers to give to Batwoman and some tail feathers from the center of the tail. Her head bag was filled with the feathers. Monster Slayer warned her not to take the feathers by the yellow sunflower patch, but to stay beside it. But she turned into there, into the forbidden sunflower patch. A flock of small gray birds swarmed out of her basket, many kinds of small birds. When they were gone, so were the wing feathers. In this way, the small birds were created. Those who wish to be obeyed should also obey, cried Monster Slayer. Only the tail feathers were left, which she sat down on. A jackrabbit came along and asked her what she was sitting on. She replied, Nothing, my grandchild. It is just that I am sitting on something pretty, I suppose. Let me see them, he said. Let me look at them. When he repeated this four times, she finally gave them to him, and he dashed away with them and stuck them to the side of his head where they are now on his ears. Monster Slayer then packed the hearts of the monsters back to her Fano Mountain and told his mother, Changing Woman, that he had killed Rock Monster Eagle. Again, he had to convince her of his success by showing her the hearts. She again danced outside with the hearts between her teeth, to mock the monsters and to rejoice. Drone footage of Shiprock, courtesy of John Veitch.